Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're doing stock market weekly recap number 20 ever in history, guys. Recapping the June 2nd, 2017 week. We're going to look at how the markets did. We're going to look at some of the stocks that went up and down the most. We're going to talk about some of the biggest news stories, which we got a couple very big news stories I want to address today. And then we got to talk about what's going on next week, guys. So let's go ahead and get right into this. First off, the Dow Jones was up 0.6% this week. Good, good week for the Dow. NASDAQ was up 1.5%. The NASDAQ just killing all the other indices. Look at that. The NASDAQ's up 17% year to date versus the Dow being up 7%. Then we had the S&P up 0.96%. The S&P's up almost 9% year to date. So uh, markets doing phenomenal and we have got to address that on whether these markets are overvalued. We will get into that in just a bit. So look at some of these stocks that went up and down the most this week. Palo Alto Networks went up almost 17% this week. Great week for Palo Alto Networks. J. Jill, the retailer, had a good week this week, up 16%. Then we had this Maui Land and Pineapple Company. I'm so sick of this company being on the list. It's on the list almost every single week. This stock it went up another 11% this past week. It's up 163% year to date. We're not even six months into the year, guys, and the stock's 163% up. I should just stick some money in that one because it just it's on the list every week, I swear. And the last one was Clear Channel Outdoor Holdings. Uh, billboard company is up about almost 10% this week. I don't know who the heck wants to advertise on a billboard. Heck, all the drivers and the passengers of cars are looking at their phones nowadays. RH Restoration Hardware down 26% this week. The stock was way overvalued. Look at it, it's still up 38% year to date despite the 26% drop. Boot Barn, another retailer down 25%. I feel like this one's made the list once before. Uh, Express, this one had another horrible week, down 20% this week, down 41% year to date. I may have to look into that company. I know they have a great balance sheet and they are profitable. Southwestern Energy, this stock was down over 13% this week. Energy company just having a horrible year. And then we had Michael Kors announced they're closing a bunch of stores. I believe it's over 100 stores they're closing. That stock was down over 10% this week. So uh, needless to say, we had some movers on the stocks, but what did I have for my biggest story this week? And we got a few different stories we got to talk about, but there's one in particular, and it's the stock market closing at record highs as tech leads the gains. But this is amazing. We got the stock market at record highs. And then this news came out Friday. May non-farm payrolls total was 138,000 versus 185,000 expected. That's very, very bad news. Wage growth also disappointed with an average hourly earnings rising at 2.5% annualized pace. The average work week was unchanged at 34.4 hours. So we have a stock market at all time highs. We have a bad uh, non-farm payroll number came out. Like that was bad. That was a huge disappointment. And it was funny. I was literally Snapchatting, posting a Snapchat, um, how the futures were doing. And as I was posting that, and I just posted it, like breaking news came out in those non-farm payrolls. And I was like, oh man, futures are gonna go to shit. Like those are, that's a really bad miss on non-farm payrolls. And I'm and so I'm like watching the futures expected to start dropping like a ton and nothing happens. And I'm like, okay, the futures are still up 67 points and now they're up 66 and they're still up 67. I'm like, nothing's happening. The futures are made, are unchanged. And look at the, that's a horrible number came out. We're in a Goldilocks period where it just seems like Bad news can't even affect the markets, and and you have on it, uh, the stock market as a whole. Just like stocks can be unhealthy two different ways. One, one way it can be unhealthy is when good news comes out and a stock still goes down, or or good news comes out for the markets and the markets still go down. That's one unhealthy way. The other unhealthy way is when the markets still go up when bad news comes out, or a stock that still goes up on bad news or disappointing results. That is what we have right now. It's it's a scary market. I might have to do a full video. There's a lot more that scares me out there other than just the stock market right now. But I'm looking around and I'm seeing so many massively overvalued companies. So many. It's I mean, the list is like gigantic of overvalued companies. Companies that either have no profits and are trading at ridiculous valuations or companies that maybe are profitable. Um, but they're just eking out a, a, you know, a small profit and they traded a ridiculous forward PE. 
And it scares me, guys. It really scares me. I think we're just, um, we need a market correction bad. Like we need a 10, 15% market correction bad right now, in my opinion, guys. The only thing kind of holding these markets up is maybe the fact that maybe in the United States, corporate tax rates can come down. Other than that, I can't make a, I can't make a, a valuation case for 90 plus percent of the stocks out there. They're just flat out overvalued and it's a, it's really ugly. So, um, we're going to have to see how time goes on. So I got a couple other stories I want to touch on. So Macau Casino GGR came out up nearly 24% in May. This came out the day after I posted the four stocks I'm buying. This is big news for my Wynn Resorts position. Casino uh, gross gaming revenue GGR and Macau rose 23.7% year on year in May to almost $2.83 billion. Imagine that, guys. One little space in a month. Gaming revenue of $2.83 billion in that little peninsula outside of Hong Kong. Like, that's just ridiculous, guys. So really good news for my wind resorts position, though. Lululemon reported numbers. Lululemon on Thursday reported fiscal uh, first quarter profits of $31.2 million. Shares of the company jumped about 15%. Uh, they had a profit of 23 cents. Earnings adjusted for asset impairment were 32 cents per share. The results surpassed Wall Street expectations. The average estimate of 17 analysts surveyed by Zach's Investment Research was for earnings of 28 cents. So they beat earnings there. They also beat earnings on the revenue side. They did 520 million versus 512 million was expected. Then we had Restoration Hardware came out with numbers. The retail chain, formerly known as Restoration Hardware, I guess they call themselves. RH now uh, dropped more than 20% as we already discussed. RH reported a net loss of 3.4 billion or 3.4 million dollars or nine cents a share on sales of 562 million dollars. So RH came out with some weak numbers there, and you can even look into that a little more on the guidance and whatnot. And it kind of baffles me that. They, they're having a little trouble making profitability right now. And I say, okay, with RH, if you're having a little trouble now, what's going to happen when the shit hits a fan and you, people aren't buying $10,000 couches and $15,000 dining tables? Like, you know, something like that worries me. And then they kind of mentioned something specific in there that kind of bothered me. Uh, the, the CEO said, we are taking cautiously opt optimistic approach to our outlook given the uncertain macro environment. And I'm like, uncertain macro environment, like you should be making money hand over fist right now. Like uncertain ma macro environment, like that's that's such a BS line CEOs use sometimes. It's like, it's always uncertain. Like there's never a time when you're like, oh, the next five years are gonna be great times. Like it's never like that. So I hate when CEOs use that excuse. Dollar General came out with numbers. Their shares rose 4.9% pre-market on Thursday. Uh, they had a first quarter profit beat and revenue beat earnings fell to 279 million though, or $1.02 versus 295 million the previous year. And uh, revenue came at, at in a five point or excuse me, $5.61 billion versus $5.28 billion was expected. So Dollar General had a nice beat there. Now we gotta talk about this story. So this is actually something from last week that I didn't address. Uh, basically it has to do with Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg. They're kind of making this claim about jobs and you know robots taking jobs and these kinds of things. And it's projected that over the next like 20 years, 15 million jobs will be created from uh, you know like assembling robots and doing robot type jobs, right? But also 25 million jobs will be replaced by robots and by artificial intelligence. And it's like, you know, Zuckerberg was saying something about we should have in the United States maybe think about moving to like a basic income where like everybody's guaranteed a certain amount of money and these kind of things. And, you know, I, it's always interesting to hear billionaires talk like that or, you know, whenever somebody that's really successful talks, everybody pays attention to it. But here's my thing, like, like humans will just figure out a way to adapt. I always believe it's like a worry. Oh my gosh, we're going to get a job that's taken by this or that or this or that. I mean, you look at you look at look at how many factory jobs we've lost in the United States over the you know in the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s. Like look at how massive amounts of jobs we lost in the factories, right? And then went overseas, and we still found a way to find new jobs and things like like both my jobs didn't exist 10 years ago. Like like real estate photography and videography. And YouTube, like if I would have told somebody 10 years ago, that's how I make a living, they would have been like, rolled their eyes like, okay, yeah, that's how you make a living, right? Um, and now it's a legit uh, thing. So 
I believe humans will just find a way to make another, you know, a, another way to make money other than just, you know, the same old thing and, you know, truck driving. Yeah. So that gets replaced by a bunch of artificial intelligence and, you know, the Walmart truck gets driven by a robot rather than gets driven by a human. Like that person will find something else to do. And I know it's a little harder for older people to do that because you got to acquire a new skill set, but the younger people always kind of figure it out. Okay. We can't make money here. We're going to go find a way to make it here because over here there's something going on. So that's just the way it goes, guys. As far as next week, Dave and Buster's is reporting earnings and the U.S. oil rig count is coming out. And that's really the only two stories I'm paying attention to next week. It's not a lot going on next week. And that's funny thing about when there's not a lot going on the next week. That's usually when some news comes out. So anyways, that's kind of what we got going on, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you just came across this channel, you may want to subscribe. We talk personal finance. We talk entrepreneurship. I'm an actual business owner. I give away so many business tips. We talk the stock market more than anything, including this series every single Saturday. Thank you for watching guys and have a great day.